20 seconds. 20 seconds, you say. Mm. Welcome to Facebook Live. We got a lot to yeah. deal with this morning. Uh, I'm super pissed. All right. <laughs> we'll get to that. That's a football-related item. The NFL just keeps giving and giving and giving it to me. Yeah. Side 95, the home of rock and roll. Playing more dead rock stars than ever before now. It's uh, Robert Palmer. Okay. Robert Palmer's dead? Yeah. Is he? Dead for a while. All right. Cloudiness with Grizzly today. keep up, you know? Up Just check 50, in every once in a while. No, you're, uh, you're concentrating on your uh, Las Vegas Raiders. You have no time to keep up with anything else. It's true. It's true. I'm very busy. Yes. One eye on the Raiders, one eye on China, uh -huh. and then fresh out of eyes. How do you do it, though? I don't know. How do you do the voodoo that you do? Yeah. Get some traffic, and then we'll get right into live and local. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some stories you might not have heard about. Here's Kelly. Oh, Quinn you heard about this one on the I-95 traffic watch. Hey, Kel. Oh, Kerry, that's a good one. They had a chance, and then the game started. You're gonna get it, Bill. What's up? Sons of bitch. It's not the Raiders that I'm mad at. We'll come back. We'll circle back to this. It's very important. I actually wrote down a bunch of stuff that we need to talk about today with all y'all. We get this. We get these pants and underwear and share to work in conjunction with one another. God. Let me ask you a quick question before we get into live and local. If you were told, under penalty of death, you could not talk or complain about anything for 10 minutes, how would that work out in your brain? I'd be dead. Okay, that's why. Today was supposed to be the day, going back to hybrid learning in Danbury, but yeah. that didn't work out. Just days before public schools were to resume in-person classes in the Hat City since the onset of COVID-19. Danbury has decided to once again postpone opening up its classrooms. In an official announcement on Friday, uh, which was the 23rd, the city superintendent of public schools, Dr. Sal Pascarella, said that after a, a close watch of Danbury's recent increase in positive cases of COVID-19, officials including uh, Mayor Mark Bouton, local medical advisors, and the Department of Public Health made the decision to pull the plug on the students' return. All right, so it is my understanding you know, we have kids. I pay attention as much as I need to right. when it comes to these things. Right. But my wife gets all involved, you know? She, like, is in Facebook groups where they talk about this kind of thing. Sure. And it's my understanding that people are furious. Which, I don't know how you could be mad. I, I could see disappointment. I could see frustration. You know, if you have to work and, and you were, you know, that this was a that's, solution that's to that. That's the big one. That's it is. I think it is the big one. You're right. But I don't know why you'd be mad about it. Well, what, the parent? Yeah. Well, be, because sometimes the decision whether to go to work and keep your job or staying home and making sure your kids are getting educated virtually. Well, it's a tough choice. Yeah. Uh, it can be frustrating, but why you would be mad at the folks in charge of trying to keep your kids safe. This is coming from the man who's mad at everything. Right. And you don't understand why you'd be mad? I understand frustration. I don't understand. The frustration issue. can turn into madness. A anger and madness. <laughs> yeah, madness. I guess that's true. I guess it's true. Yeah. I, well, I don't think it's uh, there are any simple solutions here. No. Uh, there, there, there's not. I what, what do you do? I mean, you, you can actually hire a tutor. Most parents can't afford that. Right. To work with your kids during the day if you have to be at work. And many parents do. And we're home in some combination right. or another. Like, you know, Mondays and Fridays and Thursdays. I'm here all day or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, but when I'm home, I help out with the, with the schooling, mm -hmm. you know. And Eric is there all day. So I don't have that particular right. frustration. But even still, you know, no matter who's doing it, it's not easy. Well, check this out. I think we might have not talked about it, but I think I threw this statistic out a week or two ago. 
that over 5,000 kids in Connecticut have not uh, logged on at all to That's vir crazy. virtual learning. I saw that. It yeah. makes me feel better about what we go through at home for us. And that's disturbing. I yeah. Mean, what, what, are these, what, what are the kids doing? I mean, it's like they're not in school now. Well, I can relate to, to my son on this level. I feel, I feel like he just doesn't care right now about school. Mm -hmm. And that is why I have to work at work. Because home is the relaxy place. That's where we go to play with our toys. Right. So his brain can't, he cannot function in this environment. So it's been a struggle to get him to accomplish his tasks. Sure. And understandably, I, I get it, you get it. Mm -hmm. When you go home, do you want to be working? Well. You do. I, I do, yes. But you're also an adult, too. But I'm also in a comfy setting. Right. To write my articles. So. But I'm it's saying you're, you're also an adult, too. Right. I mean, trying to get a little kid to wrap their head around it. This place that used to be where you go for fun and Correct. relaxation now is now work in it. Yeah. a work environment. It's rough. It's, it's, I can't imagine what these parents are going through who both have full-time gigs. Right. I mean, I, if I try and work at home, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there at the friggin' island counter with yeah. the bar stool. The, the level of the, the island is not right, and I'm typing, and Vita puts a lollipop on my leg. Now it's stuck to the hairs sure. on my leg. Lovely. Erica's got the TV <laughs> on 100. Lucas comes running in the yeah. room. I want fajitas, starts doing a dance. Uh -huh. it's like, what was I just writing? Uh, right. Before the lollipop and the fajitas and the TV. No wonder you're here 14 hours a day. I know. It's just, what? <laughs> If we're gonna get anything done, I gotta right. be here. We have to go. And even still, when I'm here, yeah. one of the salespeople comes in, sticks a lollipop on my leg, Joey <laughs> runs in yelling about fajitas. <laughs> Very similar. None of that happens. No, no. All right, there's your live and local. We'll uh, do up a new one coming up around 8.20 this morning. Laura says her kid's a senior having a hard time. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's, yeah. How the hell are you supposed to... I guess some people can probably thrive working at home. I am not one of them. So I can't imagine a little kid trying to wrap their head around this notion. But we'll cross that off the list. Now let's get down to the NFL here. Who the fuck do you people think you are? <laughs> you Patriots fans, and I've done enough research on this matter back. to know uh -huh, that there's a huge chunk of you who have decided that you're also now Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans. This is not anything that's happening in my bubble. It's bigger than just my observation. Comedian Bill Burr has admitted that he's rooting for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, longtime Boston fan. I'm reading an article on Barstool this morning from a guy who's always been a Patriots fan, talking about what a great victory the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had. Matt Carey, Ethan's son, texting me yesterday about the Bucks, go Bucks, go Brady. Why do you get to have two teams? What does, where does that come from? Do you go to the casino and bet the entire roulette wheel too? I would like to bet on the wheel. I'm pretty sure the wheel's gonna win. Nah, it's, it's horse shit. You need to be grown ups, pick your team. You people have decided that you could not fathom a world where you would root for a team that was gonna lose. And had you stuck with your team, that's what you'd be dealing with today. But no, you have two teams. So if one loses, you just root for the other one. Had it. Had it. Ethan is saying that I would do the same thing. Ethan's not listening. Saying he means, like, give somebody a hard time if their team loses. That's what the fun of sports is. That's absolutely what I would do. But I only have one team. And some Sundays they're going to lose. And then I'm the loser. And then I have to just deal with it and soak it up. But if you have two teams, the likelihood of you having something to celebrate on Monday morning is pretty good. And that's where you Patriots fans are right now. You Patriots slash Bucks fans. You know, and, and I, don't, I don't understand it. If Derek Carr goes to play for the Carolina Panthers, I'm not also all of a sudden a Panthers fan as well. It's just, it's you got too used to winning and you couldn't deal with the idea of actually being a fan of a losing team. 
So I, I discredit everything that any Patriots slash Bucks fan says going forward because you've made up your own rules that are ridiculous, which makes sense for a Patriots fan. You're a cheater. You're cheating at the game of being a fan because that's all you know. <laughs> Lama says, relax, be funny for me, dance for me, talk chickens. There's Marshall. Marshall's a Giants fan. How's it feel right now, Marshall? Probably not good, but you're hanging in there with your team. So that when they do, you know, in five, six, seven years, whatever it may be, go out and win the Super Bowl, you could be really happy about that. Free agency did not change that, Ken. Being loyal to the players, that's not a thing. That's, that's the kind of fan you are if you're an NBA fan. You root for the laundry. That's what Jerry Seinfeld said. You don't root for... I mean, it's nice to have players that you, that you uh, identify with and, and like in particular. Like Derek Jeter, right? Well, probably my all-time favorite athlete. If he went to play for the Diamondbacks, I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm sorry. He would have been dead to me. That's how it is. You root for the laundry. As dumb as that sounds. What? 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 What's the matter? You. What? I'm itching my neck. Yeah, well. Did you take that you, as a... You itched it at, in front? a way. Yeah, and <laughs> you affronted me. Yeah. You know? I'm really pissed off this morning. Yeah, Patriots fans are the worst. We all know it. They are the worst. The absolute worst. A bunch of spoiled brats decided that they couldn't watch a team lose. Yeah. You know? That's what it is. I know. Yeah, you know, the the Bucks went out and signed Antonio Brown. I hope that blows up in their face. I hope so too. You do, don't you? Yeah. Oh boy. So I hate everybody and everything. We should probably move on from the Raiders because I'm losing people. I feel the room <laughs> creaking away. People are drifting away from me. Cross that off the list. It's now like when you're at a cocktail party, you doing this thing, and people are like, they're drifting away. Go. It happens to me all yeah. the time. <laughs> I lose people constantly. Sometimes I start out hot, you know. I make a couple jokes, get everybody laughing. I'm talking to you about it. I have to uh, go take a shit. <laughs> to go take a shit. <laughs> and then you just see him in the corner of the room, like right, talking not to taking, someone pointing at you. not taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next item up is uh, Dudley Town. So I got a new article that is like what two years in the making here. Yeah. A year waiting for a freedom of information request. Another year waiting for our editors to look it over. And then uh, add an additional 10 days of me tweaking it mm -hmm. and looking at it. We're looking at we're it. Looking Some at of our best people, we're looking at it. And I'm still, after this amount of time, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to launch it. But I'm sure. also like, well, I wish it was better after two years. <laughs> for fuck's yeah. sake, man. But... It's cool, and what's particularly cool about it is in the beginning of this thing, I said, listen, I'm not trying to out people or name names. Well, we're past that. I'm naming names. I'm outing sure, people. Sure, exactly. You know, if you're going to be part of a giant secret-keeping society, then, if we, then we need to just go point at you and go stop keeping secrets, right. whatever they are. There is a secret. There's got to be. But you can't say that in writing. You know, you can't say it. You have to say it all professional on the up and up like. And should you express an opinion, you got to make it clear that it's your opinion. You can't speak on behalf of others. The written word is ass, okay? Because I could say anything, right. and it's very disposable. We move on to the next. Maybe we piss somebody off. You know, we say, ah, we didn't mean to piss you off. <laughs> but when it's written in black and white, mm -hmm. it's just there, you know? And 12 years from now, this cancel society comes back and goes, you see what he wrote? Did you see what he wrote? We got to cancel him. You know? Ruin his life. Shut it down, Mike. Does your wife ever, like, pull a Joe Biden on you? What is a Joe Biden? <clears throat> Forget my name? No, no. <laughs> yes. Would you just shut up? All the time. Okay. All the time. It's like a, a normal thing, then. Yeah. You ready? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. You understand I can't hear you when I put my headphones on, right? Yeah. <laughs> 995. 
the home of rock and roll. I was just making noises anyway. <laughs> okay. The noises I don't mind. I know, it's the words yeah. that get you. 637, cloudiness with some drizzle on and off today, 56. Hey, we had a pretty good time yesterday, huh? Yes, that was, um, <coughs> didn't know what to expect because uh, we've never done this before. We went over to Ridgefield yeah. and went to uh, this pumpkin patch. Every year, this group in Ridgefield uh, raises money for the Navajo Nation. That's where the pumpkins come from. Five semi-load trucks will pull up, and when they could do pumpkins, which of course was last year, they couldn't do them this year, but they were cardboard, you had to decorate them. 33,000 pumpkins these people sell from this site on Main Street in Ridgefield. And all it's a my church. Yeah. And, uh, Jerry Lee, uh, J Jenny Lee, Mary Lee. I was just looking it up, too. What, I can't remember the, the name, name of the church. church? Uh, yeah, it's uh, something Lee. I can't leave <laughs> no, no. without you. Well, we embarrass ourselves here. But they sell 33,000 pumpkins. Some families <laughs> buy up like a row of 25. But it was awesome because people put a lot of hard work and decorated their pumpkins. Jesse Lee Church. Jesse Lee Church. We apologize. Yeah. And uh, the award-winning pumpkin, I have to say this, in the, I think it was like the 9 to 15-year-old range, 16-year-old uh -huh. range, was Eddie Van Pumpkin. Eddie Van Pumpkin. It had the whole design <laughs> of Eddie Van Halen's famous guitar. It was cool. Right. So, it so was, thank uh, you to all the folks for having us out there. Wonderful yes, to be here. Yeah. Let's get the I-95 right now traffic update. Kelly Quinn, come on in. One woman said, thanks for coming out to Ridgefield. To me. She knows. Yeah, she knew. And I was like, do I continue this conversation? I just right. said, you're welcome and thank you I for said, having me. I said, do you me. wait to set this whole area on fire? <laughs> I know, I didn't want to start the really? fire. But she was laughing, so I'm sure I could have yeah, yeah. gone down that road. But then I, I don't want to sit there and explain myself. I'm actually that. surprised people in Richfield even listen to this show. <laughs> well, we've given them plenty of reasons to not right. listen. I have, at least. So, yeah. Dudley Town. So, it's good. It's good. It's a good. There's a police report in it. That's one of the, that's the main item that we waited for with the Freedom of Information request. Uh, it involves allegations of gun waving and a pantsless woman. Is gun waving a thing? Is pointing. It of guns? It's more point gun pointing than, it, than anything. And... It's just wild times. Now, on the one hand, I could see you know these people being frustrated with people constantly trying to get on their property. Of right. course, that's crazy town. You don't want to deal with that. On the other hand, I feel like they're custodians of a secret. And they could have moved 85,000 times to another area. <laughs> Why do you want to be the custodian of the village of the damned and have constant ghost hunters running into your woods? Just a question. Just a question. Just ask him. For a friend. For a friend. All right, we can cross that one off the list. <laughs> we did that one. Twenty away from seven o'clock, Lou and sports. The LA Dodgers won Game Five of the World Series last night, four to two, over the Tampa Bay Rays, taking a three to two series lead. Just one win away from winning the whole thing. We'll come back to Game Four later because that was a wild scene. The Atlanta Falcons are a disaster, and they lost again yesterday because they scored a touchdown. The problem was they scored too soon and left enough time on the clock for the Lions to retake the lead. Falcons running back Todd Gurley actually tried to stop short of the end zone but fell into it, accidentally <laughs> scoring a touchdown. <laughs> what are you doing, Todd? <laughs> you can't even hear the announcers. No. <laughs> Are you driving a bus through the stadium? <laughs> Evidently. The Jets jumped out to a 10 0 lead, but did anybody think they were going to hold it? No. They lost 18 to 10 to the Bills. They're 0 7. Uh, the Patriots are on a three game skid after getting pummeled by the 49ers, 33 to 6. You can't even laugh at them because uh, they're all celebrating their Buccaneers victory over yeah. the Raiders yesterday. Right. right. Uh, 
Uh, Patriots quarterback Cam Newton didn't finish yesterday's game against the 49ers. He was benched by head coach Bill Belichick after throwing his third interception of the day in the second half. Jared Stidham came on in relief and finished 6 of 10 for 64 yards. He threw a pick. And Tom Brady and the... Uh, and uh, receiver Antonio Brown are reuniting. ESPN reports the seven-time Pro Bowlers agreed to a one-year deal with the Bucks. Hopefully that blows up in their face. Giant disaster coming. That's your check on sports. I-95 weather. We're looking cloudiness. Drizzle on the loss today, 56. And tomorrow, cloudy and 57 degrees. That's a good point, Marshall. I have been waiting for the police report for some time. Actually, I got it in April of 2019, I think. I have to look it back up. It's in the article. I got it sometime in 2019. There were three police reports in it. I published two or did two articles about two of the three police reports. It was the third report that we've spent this much time analyzing. So actually... This is this most recent delay has been on us. Uh, just to make sure I wasn't slandering anybody. <laughs> but it didn't have to take that long. I wasn't. It was determined that I didn't say anything, you know, mm -hmm. out of line. Right. Or that could, you know, get any... I mean, it could get a negative reaction from the folks involved, but it nothing that would uh, cue any litigation, put it mm -hmm. that way. But they just took forever to look at it. I said, they said, we're looking at it. And I said, well, when are you looking at it? <laughs> you know? I could have had this thing up last Halloween. Exactly. Okay, Frank, Lama. Uh, enough with you. But actually, back to you. You. <laughs> so I want to start this Noodle Head Network. Noodle Head Network. I want to get some of our more unique followers sure, slash you know listeners. No, that's somebody else's thing. Who's that? Howard Stern. Oh. Howard Stern. You familiar with him? I've heard of him. I want to start this Noodle Head Network. I think, Lama, we've talked about you possibly being involved in it. <laughs> possibly. We want to get crazy Mario. We've got to track down Mario. Mario's off his nut. I'm thinking about Aurora. Um, Johnny the Garbage Man. There's a handful of people that I want to hand select because they're unique, well, they weird, or out of their mind, right. or both, or some combination of that. Or... They could be outspoken. I mean, it, to put it in outspoken. a nicer term. Yeah, Beach Mom is another one that right, I want right. to put in this. And what I'd like to do is create a group text message. Does that mean I will always answer you? No. Absolutely not. In fact, I will rarely answer. <laughs> just, just know that. But I will have, I want you all connected and communicating on a regular basis. Because... I know the conflict that's going to come from this uh -huh. that we can bring to the show and Uncle Ricky. And um, so we'll be able to talk about the fights that they have, the discussions that they have, which will be absurd. Now, if I were just to start the conversation, let's say with Mario, right? I just pulled the ripcord. And start. You need 15 minutes right there. Well, that's why we have them off hours away from the show, communicating with each other. Yeah. Right? We get Mario started on 9-11, which, by the way, everything he says I disagree with. Right. Everything. Everything. Not even, it's not even a disagreement. I just think he's nuts. Right? But they can have these psycho dialogue sure. on their own, and I'll be able to monitor them and bring them to the show. And then when they fight with each other, we could throw them on the air. I think it's going to be great. The Noodlehead Network. We got we to gotta start. There's no way to get in touch with Mario other than to, to probe him and if poke we, him into coming oh, on. We could call him out on the air. If I That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We got to dare him to call because we got to get his contact information. The rest of them, I can reach out to them on Facebook and, or talk to them directly because I have their numbers already and get them worked out. 
But again, I cannot stress enough. I'm not, if you're gonna, <laughs> in the group mes message, direct your statements or questions at me, I'm not going to answer. All right? I got enough questions and statements exactly. coming my way, but I will refer to this stuff on the air. Aurora Wood, she would organize settler? the group into group meetings. I'm sorry? Do we Say have your settler? Yeah, it's the one with the 600 people in the fetish party in Berlin, right on top. I didn't label them. Ken, what's up? But, and, and for folks who I don't select to be part of this, I don't want you to feel... I don't want to have feelings about it at all. And then say, tell me how loyal you are, or how much you like the show. I have a very unique vision about how this is going to play out and why this will work with these handful of weird people. <clears throat> I got Erica Lama to deal with. I have to answer her questions and statements, you know, among others. Who didn't I answer yesterday? My father. That's another one. Can't stop with the phone. <laughs> I just like to set it aside from time to time. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. When I go, I go hard. Yeah. Monday to Friday. All over social media, the phone up the ass, you know, constantly, all day long, every day. Monday to Friday. Saturday comes around, you know. Maybe I'll post something about the college football game I'm watching. Right, right. You know? Or have too many beers and get mad at Matt for talking shit about the Raiders. Right. But that's about the extent of it. Or post videos of Trump dancing, which is one of my new favorite things. <laughs> have you seen the dancing? Um, yeah, you know what? I try to avoid him at all costs. No, but I know. But the dancing. I'm not talking about politics here. I'm just talking yeah. about him dancing. Did you oh, see that? I just hit myself in the head. With a little bumper here to the next okay. show. You haven't seen him dancing? No. It's like he's trying to figure out how committed he's going to be to the dancing mm -hmm. whilst dancing. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's in it, but he's not. And then he stops, and then he starts again. Why he is just he one of these. I don't know, because they put on music. Yeah. At, at these rallies. They put on a song, and then he's like... Yeah. And you can see his brain going, how much am I going to dance? How long am I going to dance right. for? And then he stops, and then he starts again. It's the hottest thing out. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, they're interesting characters, Marshall, but that's what I mean. I don't want somebody to say, well, I'm an interesting character. Yeah, there are people who will not be selected for this that I find interesting. It's just I'm hand selecting certain individuals that I know will create conflict. Is that a good way to say it? Yeah. All right, party time. Because everybody loves that's conflict. The, that's the big boy way to say it. Right. I want wacky theories. In fact, Beach Mom's got to be on the top of this list. She's out there right now. She's saying all sorts of stuff. Just kick it up dust because it's a muff. You know? Does everything have to rhyme? Everything has to rhyme. Sakes. What was the lady that's in the news this morning? We're what? not, what did she say? We're not united, we're divided, something right. like that. Yes, yes. I go, what do you want, a cookie? <laughs> How many times has that been said? <laughs> well, she's right, but other than it's that. right, but it's the most obvious thing to say in conjunction with the most obvious rhyme okay. of all what time. And there's a rhyme to finish out that sentence. Right. You follow? Yeah. Prolific rhymer. You know who rhymes good? Uh, the, like, player's ball. They have those pimp's balls. Okay. And the pimp's ball, I was watching a Snoop Dogg Instagram video, and he was watching, like, a DVD of these player's ball, where these pimps will gather in, like, a bar in Detroit, Baltimore, whatever. And they come in their best pimp gear, and then they do these rhymes. And they're very elaborate. Are they good? They're very good. You know. Maybe they want to get out of the pimping game and get into the, uh, you know, hip-hop game. Well, they say pimping's not easy, but it seems like they're not doing anything. They're getting dressed and rhyming all day. And the women are doing the work, I would right, think. Right. 
And pimping ain't easy. Like, what are you actually doing? You know? All right. Like, why do you have so much time to come up with rhymes? I can't hear you now. <laughs> There's a reason for that. <laughs> Who's this guy? Do I want to add him? Sure, why not? 90 mutual friends? That'll work. Thank God for these headphones. Yes. Side 95, the home of rock and roll, Ethan and Lou here. We're live on Facebook, by the way. Facebook Live. That's what they call it. We've right. got uh, a live segment coming up on the radio here. Mm -hmm. It's called Miss Headlines. It's one of our favorite times of the day. In just minutes. Mm -hmm. Cloudiness, drizzle on or off today, 56. Wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Let's get the traffic. Kelly Quinn on the I-95 Beach traffic Beach Mom watch. for president. Have you guys been keeping up with Beach Mom, what she's up to? She's nutty. And then when she's not kicking up controversy, she's shaking them pineapples. Chris and Tiandra fell off the face of the earth. What's that? Chris and Tiandra, Beach Mom and her husband. They were all over our stuff, you know, hanging out, talking yeah, to us. Disappeared. I should text them and say, where the hell you are? Where the hell you are? Nice English. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> Hey, Miss Headlines brought to you by New Age Collision Center, General Motors Certified Collision Repair Facility, where service and quality still exist from a small fender bender to big collision repairs. These are the guys to get the job done. They're located in Brookfield at 203-546-7614. I'm going to give you this to read because... Um, it's it's, um, I think you'd be able to make more sense out of it than I would. A fetish party with around 600 guests in Berlin came to an abrupt end on Saturday. Officials of the Berlin police and the federal police dissolved the event. There were just too many for too little space, the police said later that evening. According to the Berlin Infection Protection Ordinance, look at the rhyme there, huh? Wow. The Infection Protection Ordinance. Well, I'd be like, hey, we got to de rhyme this, guys. This is a federal agency. Uh, events in closed rooms are permitted with up to 1,000 people in compliance with the hygiene rules and the ban on dancing. That's a big number. So they're saying if, if a facility is compliant with the hygiene regulations and the no footloose dancing ban, then you can have a party of up to 1,000 people? That is COVID irresponsible. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's a king fest. Right. Yeah. Well, the organizer expects proceedings for violating the infection protection ordinance. The minimum distance could not be kept because of the large number of people. The organizer ended the party at the request of the officials. The guests were released into the Berlin night and sent home. Really? Yeah, they went home. Well, they didn't go home. They, no, they were all yeah, horned up, dude. Yeah, they of were, course. They were jazzed up. They were, we're all ready up. to we go. We go home. No, with hundreds of emergency services, the Berlin police checked on Saturday whether people were adhering to the corona rules. Around 1,000 police officers were on duty during the day, half from the federal police. So they had to bust it up. I wonder what the, what the hottest kink on the menu was. Jeez, I don't know. I don't keep up with the kink. Like you don't I keep should. up with the kink like you should. Right, right. What's your thing? <laughs> I, I almost had you. Refuse to be bold. <laughs> uh, I actually know, which scares me. All right, it here we scares go. me that I know what you're into. Well, I mean, we know everything about each other. It's true. I'm assuming. 28-year-old <laughs> James Florin from Vero Beach, Florida. Florida, you say. Called 911 around 1.45 a.m. on Friday to report something serious. He said he was, quote, seeing aliens, mm -hmm. little ones, flying low to the ground. And he thought the police should take care of the aliens. But if they didn't, he would have to, quote, go Independence Day on them. Okay. In other words, he'd take them out himself. Sure. Cops came out but didn't see the aliens, but they did wind up arresting James for misuse of 911. Okay. Yeah. Nothing about drugs? No, no drugs. Mm. I don't know if I believe it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what a know. conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm a very conclusive kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, Mike Tyson has a hot new uh, EDM club track it's called Mike Tyson <laughs> and technically it's by an electronic group called what Tiki Lau Tiki Lau okay but it features Tyson on vocals singing I'm Mike Tyson over and, and over, over again and over there are a few other uh, vocal samples including one where Tyson says quote 
Lend me your ears or I will eat them all. All right, put it up. Let's okay. listen to Hold this on, piece of garbage put this together. Down. Put that on. We're oh. not going to make it long, I'm oh. telling you. The wildest have been the craziest, have been outrageous. The vicious, the most destructive fighters. I'm Mike Tyson, an international star. A warlord to strip your heart out. And guess what? I'm Mike Tyson. So there you go, he's Mike Tyson. Yeah, uh, it's uh, I think probably instant hit. I was thinking about it this morning. We are at the lowest of the low that we've ever been uh, in terms of music in this country. Another stop. And there's no coming back. I don't think we're coming back. You we keep saying any? there's going to be a it's new... It's going to get worse? Yeah, there's going to be a new thing. What new thing? We always keep saying there's going to be a sound. There's going to be somebody that saves rock and roll. There's going to be somebody that saves music, and I don't see it. I don't see it happening. This is bad. Oh, if you could smell sound, you'd throw up after smelling it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I agree. Be smellier than Kevin Malone's shoes, which became a health issue. That's a good analogy, or it's from a TV show. It's from The Office. Of course. Kevin Malone's shoes yeah, at the wedding were so bad that the hotel uh, clerk deemed them a safety issue and had to throw them away. Uh huh. All right. I mean, this is just as bad as it gets. I'm trying to think what. Or how many drugs I'd have to take to dance to that? A lot. I'm willing. A lot, whatever a lot to, means. I'm willing to donate my mind and body to science to figure it out. Okay. Give me the zim zams, the flim flams, the uppers, the downers, the wackadoos, the reds, the blues, the purples. There's so many. Yeah. So little time. I'll so take them all. Uh, those of you that just start bugging out. I'm Mike Tyson. Wrap it up. <laughs> It's a mission that matters deeply for the safety of the All world and the people. All right, that's oh. loud. Really loud. All right, everybody. This has been a blast. We have got to move on to the next activity. We've got a lot to do this morning. So you keep it tight. You keep it right. Download the I-95 Rock app for free at Google Play or the App Store. Follow us on Instagram at I-95 Rock. And then go subscribe to my YouTube channel by typing my name into the search bar and hitting the giant red button. This has been fun.